Welcome to Diffuse Congruence. This is episode 77 of the American Muslim Experience. My name is Zaki Hassan, and I'm here with my partner, Pervez Ahmed, here at Hub925. Yeah, it's great to be back, and uh, it's always great to be back with you, Zaki, and uh, especially here at uh, Hub925. We're always fortunate that we're able to record here. And uh, uh, I'm I'm glad to be here discussing a very uh, heavy topic, uh, but I think it's a topic that is necessary uh, as it pertains to not just the American Muslim community, but the Muslim community at large. And uh, here to discuss this topic with us, which we'll mention in just a second, is uh, Danish Hassim, who graduated from UC Berkeley in 2010 with a BA in Religious Studies. He began a formal study of the Islamic sciences in 2006 with local teachers and served as an Arabic translator while in college. Upon graduating, he dedicated himself to full-time traditional Islamic studies, and he's now working on his doctorate on the topic of spiritual abuse in Islam at the Western Institute for Social Research in Berkeley, California. Danish has been working with victims of spiritual abuse for nine years, as well as adults facing bullying and relationships with narcissists. So as that intro uh, alludes to, we are here to talk about the problem of spiritual abuse within the Islamic community. Danish, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, um, you know, and I, we were talking, uh, you know, off mic or off air on um, before the show about how um, I mean, it, obviously, this this is a conversation that's always relevant. Um, but, um, you know, right now, uh, you know, it's in, in terms of the conversation that's happening, perhaps on a on a national level right now, given, um, you know, the um, the documentary that just uh, dropped by HBO. Uh, leaving Neverland, dealing with uh, uh, the issue of abuse, and in yeah. that case, Michael Jackson and you know pedophilia, sexual abuse, which um, we're talking about abuse, uh, you know, as a whole, and spiritual abuse being one 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 facet of and, that. And and there's t- and there's two facets. Mm-hmm. There is obviously uh, the the victims who are recollecting what's happened, and then as as the counterpoint, there is the people who are sort of jumping on the grenade to say, no, there's no way this happened. There's no way this could have happened. And it brings to mind, uh, to me anyway, what happened five years ago with the Bill Cosby mm-hmm. allegations. Mm-hmm. And and w- what what I'm reminded of what, when the thing with the Bill Cosby happened, it, it was at the exact same time where I learned about a similar kind of abuse within, within an institution, uh, an Islamic institution. And what I saw happening in the press vis-a-vis Bill Cosby where, again, you have all these victims saying, look, this is a thing that happened. And then you have all these people saying, no, 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 there's no way. You're wrong. You're wrong. There's exactly what I saw happening in reference to this prominent uh, persona mm-hmm. in, the, in the Muslim community. And, you know, you can't help but draw these parallels. And then now kind of the same thing with, with the Michael Jackson thing. That's right. Uh, and I think, you know, like that's sort of something that you see play out time and time again, which is, you, you know, you have a contingent of the of, of people who refuse to believe mm. that the, the you know the allegations have any validity that that, that 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 this individual or group of individuals could could be guilty i mean and, you know and, and when we're talking about abuse and 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 religious institutions um certainly the ongoing sort of things um you know um within the catholic church and 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 the and the church dealing with uh, accusations of uh, sexual abuse and spiritual abuse, uh, perhaps, and we'll get into what exactly we mean when we talk or when we describe something as spiritual abuse. Um, and then also, you know, with, within the Zen Buddhist community right now, they're dealing with, um, you know, uh, Standing Rock or what? No, not Standing Rock. Uh, um, against the Stream and Noah Levine and uh, accusations that came out against this very charismatic um, Zen Buddhist. Uh, you know, figure. Um, and, and, and so I guess there's a few takeaways, I mean, that are at least for me, one is that, you know, this, it's, it's sort of religious, you know, it's, you know, accusations of abuse and things like this are conversations that are happening in all communities. Certainly no community, no religious community is absolved or somehow immune from Hmm. these type of occurrences. And then secondly, like you said, you 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 do you do, do see the kind of entrenchment that we're talking about about you know from a group of people who say he's abs- he or she is absolutely guilty and so on and then you have you know the, that contingent of people who say well no the the abuse the victims are making this up they they're just in it for the money or the fame or whatever may be the case so uh, we kind of see those things play out mm-hmm. um 
I guess, you know, Donish, since we have you, uh, you know, and, and we're talking, you know, we, we, we certainly want to get into the conversation around spiritual abuse. I guess maybe tell us a little bit about sort of your background and then what led you to start the website that you started, which. And yeah, we should we should mention yeah, yeah. The, the website is in shakes clothing, which maybe you can spell that for our listeners because there's different ways to spell. Right. Shakes. So that's a I N S H Y K H S C L O clothing.com <laughs> right. and and uh, can it's not a clothing website <laughs> right and and before you even talk about how we ended up there maybe tell our listeners what is the mission statement of uh the website yeah so a lot of what we do is um it's education to prevent people uh from falling into spiritual abuse or if they're going through it at the moment to recognize it and be able to break away which alhamdulillah has been very successful i get people reaching out often mm. from different parts of the world actually saying mm. that the material has helped them get out of it. Um, another thing I do is um, work with victims, people who've gone through it, and help them, like you could say, reconnect to Allah, reconnect to Islam, mm -hmm. and uh, understand that what happened to them was wrong. Um, a third component is um, bifold, I would say. One is work with institutions uh, to create policies, to hold abusers accountable, and to also report abuse and to have uh, concrete what's generally ambiguous. And, and the second part of that, which I also enjoy, is um, having conversations with communities that have been afflicted mm -hmm. or who want to make changes locally. So I'll actually travel. It's, sometimes it's just held in people's homes mm -hmm. and we just get the conversations going and uh, really give people the tools on how to affect change in their in their own community. Um, and so I, I guess maybe a, a starting and, 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 and this website went up or, or you've been do, you know, doing the website work since. So, yeah, I mean. The domain was registered, I think, in like November of 2016, or maybe it was January 2017. Okay. Then just wrote a lot of material, and then and then uh, we launched uh, Ramadan of 2017. Got it. Um, but the work is, I mean, the website it came out of. Um, I've been doing this work since, as I mentioned, like 2010 with a lot of people in the community. Um, then it was later on, maybe 2016, that uh, I had actually was part of one case and uh Danya the um she's Danya Shakfi she's in Chicago a lawyer she was working in a few other cases okay. so we met actually in one of the cases um she'd been doing it for a number of years as well and uh, we realized this was a very large problem mm -hmm. and we had to be able to do this at a higher level right. and then we started in Shakes clothing uh, maybe a year later but we were already doing stuff before and, and for those that listen to the sh show you know that this is a conversation that we've uh, certainly had in the past um we've had uh, Umar Muzaffar on the show um you, you mentioned Chicago um you know and so that jogged my memory or I wanted to make a reference to that as well where Omar was on and because of his uh, sort of intimate involvement with uh, certain high profile cases, a couple of different, uh, ones, couple yeah. of different ones, yeah. uh, you know, um, Chicago uh, and, 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 and Dallas specifically that we were sort of uh, talking about. But um, I guess, um, so, the, so my question I, or a starting point, Donish, and, and, and we got into a little bit of this with Omar, but, you know, spiritual abuse. You know, how do we define that? I mean, how would you define spiritual right? So abuse? I wrote an article on this because I realized it was a point of confusion for a lot of Muslims. This essentially, I just went with the term before launching the website because it was like, how do we make this something that people can find on the internet? Mm -hmm. And the equivalent um, in the Western context is the term spiritual abuse. You call it religious abuse. But really, we have this traditional concept of using deen for dunya. Mm. Using right. religion for yeah, yeah. worldly, sorry. Using religion for worldly ends, yeah. yeah. So like talabu uh, dunya mm -hmm. right? So so you, yeah, literally just like you said, using religion for. Worldly so when you gain. have like televangelists, for example, who are like fund my private plane, that kind of thing, it, right? Or it could be just insincerity, riya, right? Mm -hmm. Shirk al uh, mm -hmm. ostentation. Mm -hmm. So there's alalim al nafsihi, alalim li nafsihi, alalim li So mm -hmm. someone who oppresses themselves. Uh, through ostentation, and they will benefit a lot of other people, mm, right? Wow. Okay. So there's going to be, for example, um, scholars going to hell, and their followers are going to heaven, and they're going to be like, "How are you saved? You're the. How are you going to hell? You're the only reason I'm going to heaven." And then he says, "I used to command to good, but I didn't practice it myself." Right. So that person benefited others, but not himself. Right. Then there's people who harm others through the guise of religion, and they use the veil of piety, the cover of piety, to harm others and to slip the radar. So as that's when it affects other people. So I put, radar. What do you mean by that? As in like uh, people won't detect that these 
people could be harmful. Mm, okay. So, so I mean, I know you you kind of talked about spiritual abuse as separate than child abuse or other kinds of abuses, but I I think we should or how it's used as, as an umbrella term, yeah, which encompasses financial child abuse, um, you name it, like sexual all, impropriety, sexual impropriety, all kinds of abuse where religion is used. Got wow. it. Okay. Yeah. So and that that's how it's used actually in the field. So I, and I even mentioned that to say you know. Sheikh so so spiritually abuse someone else. That's why it's meaningless unless you're specific about what the actual um, crime okay. was. So it's an umbrella term. That it's an umbrella term, yeah, just to talk about it. But okay. then if you want to get specific about what someone did, you have to say what they specifically did. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, uh, as you kind of alluded to, this was a term that was being used in a Western context. Absolutely, yeah. So are, I've been participating right. in spiritual abuse conference for a number of years now with Got the it. International Cult Studies Association. And it's just been around. So that's why I'm not really like an advocate for the term in terms of like the term itself. It's yeah. just utilitarian. Like, Got it. It exists as a jump off point. Exactly. Because, yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of people have found the website and Alhamdulillah gotten a lot of help just because they were going through something and he did the search Muslim spiritual abuse. Mm. So I'm not going to give that up just if there's a term that might work better, but it's not going to be helpful. Yeah. Right. And you haven't yeah. found that the term is necessarily problematic. So, I mean, why? It, it's only, no, not at all. Not yeah, at all. It's exactly. only vague and ambiguous if you're using it as a crime, right? Like Shay right. Stone, so spiritual abuse. Well, what does that actually mean? Thank because you. then it is vague. But if we're yeah. talking about as a field, it's not vague. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and I think you, you know, you're kind of leading the conversation into kind of an important area, which is, you know, uh, there is a certain level of ambiguity or, not necessarily ambiguity, perhaps, but more where the term is used sort of as a catch-all and we're not being specific. And the danger of that is we tend to, uh, there's no sort of, I don't know, triaging or prioritizing in terms of, okay, well, you know, this is a conversation around uh, sexual impropriety, which is different mm -hmm. than financial uh, right. impropriety or, you know, uh, right. I mean, you know, s s certain other abuses. So. How do we qualify that within the conversation around spiritual abuse? Is it by, is it like, just by category? Okay. Yeah. Case by case. Right. 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 Exactly. Right. And, and so, so then like you started the website, I mean, you certainly, um, in your estimation, uh, there was a need for this mm -hmm. and what is that need? I mean, you know, to, so yeah, the need is to make people aware that this is really going on and mm -hmm. something needs to be done about it at least in terms of addressing um, the fr frustrations that are being vented in other areas and helping people out. Like, you know, what happened was wrong. This shouldn't happen. So the need I felt was that nobody was really doing that uh, formally. Okay. So I went to a lot of teachers, for example, and, you know, nobody had an issue. Nobody was denying that this actually happened. Mm -hmm. Right. So especially in some of the, like Sufi groups or, you know, if you talk to them, they have, and I just met like a, like someone who teaches, uh, he had stories going back 20 years about really horrible abuse. Mm. So this is not talked about amongst teachers, amongst people who've like, or been organizing events as some sort of like, it's not viewed with skepticism. Everybody knows it's the case, but I found people, um, they weren't really willing to get involved at a deeper level, which is fine because they're doing other important work. And uh, some of it was even brushed off because they didn't see a model of how to address it. Got it. And that's why when I, when the website was there, then the conversations I had with these individuals was very different because they actually saw what it looked like to address spiritual abuse. Okay. Um, and, and, you know, you, you, you mentioned Sufi groups. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I want to be clear to, for our listeners that, I mean, that's not necessarily to say that this is, no, we'll get, yeah. yeah, certainly more prevalent within that particular, you know, right. uh, orientation, if you will. So that was some of the problems some people have going back to like, you know, their experiences in the whole 90s Sufi Salafi beef. Like, yeah. oh, you talk about Sufi Tariqas and what goes on there, it's going to make us look bad. It's going to help the Salafis win the Dawa. <laughs> but like, I, I do want to say that abuse is in every area. And we could, we could talk more about that. But there's certain types of abuse that are more, more prevalent, that are more prevalent in Sufi Tariqas and in Sufi groups. Be, depending on uh, because of the worldview that aligns more with actual cults. This is not to say that Sufi Torikas are by default cults. Got it. But cult type of abuse and mentality that works in other areas, like in cult churches, martial arts cults, that 
manifest in Islam mm. via Sufi tariqas. And I, why is that? Because mm. of the because of the potential for adopting different criterion that's not objective, such as the feelings of a teacher, the dreams he'll claim to see or she'll claim to see. And you leave a concrete criterion, right? Quran, hadith, the madahib, to just um, haphazard feelings, visions, alleged visions, or real visions. And and the students really believe it. Also, the emphasis on the really close and personal relationship. Right. Yeah. Between teacher and student. Right. And that teacher-student closeness and abuse also manifests in like, you know, like Amir syndrome, which happens with all groups in, in amongst Muslims, whether Sufi or not, Salafi. Amir can, syndrome. Can you Amir syndrome. On that? Yeah. yeah. So like, you know, they have different groups where people are like having education, the Amir really. And they, they like appoint an Amir. A leader. Like a leader. Yes, a leader. Sorry. And then it really goes to that leader's head. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. and, and there's something, I mean, again, you know, um, without making any sort of, uh, mm. uh, uh, political statement, I mean, there's something, uh, you know, inherent within Sufi or, yeah. or paths or spiritual paths or, or Sufism, the way it's, it's been generally constructed, mm-hmm. um, and, and perhaps in the West, especially where the centrality of a charismatic leader mm-hmm. or a charismatic figure is at the very center of mm-hmm. that organization mm-hmm. um and so that lends itself to that kind of and, and it's not just deference it's to, not to just, the potential for yeah, people very, uh you know taking advantage of that right. gratification so right. the charismatic personality is a part of it and they will abuse inner outside of tarika uh-huh. right so i mean steve jobs could have been a great cult leader and maybe he was right mm-hmm. if you look at him in the secular world right sure. and this is all over charisma but it's also the beliefs it's not just the personality mm-hmm. and people going along it's actually the beliefs that are inculcated in those tarikas. that's right that is that 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 that, that the spiritual teacher right. is um uh, more in tuned with the divine and mm. more in connection and hence, you know, has certain feelings or like you said, dreams or, or, right. or, 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 uh, yeah. So, and, and that belief that they're in more in tune, mm-hmm. more spiritual is not itself abusive. Right? right. So it creates a larger potential for abuse for those who want to go that route and then abuse. And they'll do this by really grooming the worldview of a lot of students. Mm-hmm. So for example, um, like this belief that, which, you know, it's obviously possible and it happens that you could see the sins of other people. Okay. But they'll make it, they'll tell a lot of stories about like doubting yourself or repeat stories of like, you know, the student thought he saw something, then the sheikh saw something the student didn't. And it's always creating self-doubt in that other person and the sheikh always being right, um, not trusting yourself too much. Um, and even Quran and Sunnah being something of just for Ahl al like people of the outward. And we're Ahlul Batin. We're people of the inward. Mm. We, we're focused on purifying our souls. And Imam al-Ghazali talks about this actually in the book of the deluded people. And he gives, I believe, eight different categories of the Sufis. So, and again, to say exactly, they're not all the same. But this right. does happen in those groups. And it's sort of unique in Islam to the Sufi tariqas, but mm. not in the world in the larger context. But the Sufi tariqa itself is not intrinsically abusive. And that's, I want to be very clear about that's that. Right, yeah, that's this right. Is, we're... We're walking through a very well narrow mind. I, I, I was going to say, like, the, two things came to mind as you were just talking, mm-hmm. Danish. And one was um, the parallels uh, between the documentary we we, we reference. Mm-hmm. And I know you haven't seen the documentary, mm-hmm. and Zaki's sort of still, you know, processing it, it, processing it and mm-hmm. making his way through it, but leaving Neverland because the parallels there being where the abuser mm-hmm. uh, inculcates a worldview mm-hmm. where uh, everyone else won't understand this. Everyone mm-hmm. else is, 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 is privy to this. Right. And it's something that is between you or, or between the abuser and the abused, the victims. And secondly, and don't, the, don't trust. You can't mm-hmm. trust those other. I'm the only one who's mm-hmm. looking out exactly. for exactly. Even these people who you thought were on your side, you should, you can't trust them. Mm-hmm. This is yeah. what we'd say is right. between us. So this kind of, uh, to, you know, this real uh, attempt, um, a very intentional attempt to isolate the abused, mm. uh, a, a, you know, from family and friends and others that would perhaps counsel or advise um, or see the warning signs um, a, a, and to isolate that person where it's just the abuser and the abused, mm. you know, and, and it sort of really constructs this really. Um, yeah. It, 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 yeah. It's very manipulative, mm-hmm. very manipulative. Uh, the other thing that came to mind when you were talking um, was, uh, you know, this idea of um, 
uh, not only isolation, but uh, I, well, I, I kind of lost my train of thought there, but it, it'll, it'll come to me. But you, yeah. you, you mentioned something else that sort of jogs something, another point. But I think maybe focusing on this idea of isolation. Yeah. So, I mean, we could talk about isolation, but I, I think it's also worth mentioning that yes. a lot of abusers, when it comes to children, get very involved with the family. Mm -hmm. Right. And they earn the trust of the parents. So, so we, and, and, whenever, and again, the parallels, I mean, I think right. Zucky and I are kind of like, well, uh, you and know, nodding we, because of the parallels right. to the documentary. Right. And I haven't seen the documentary, right, right, so right, I don't, right. but, but I, don't, I don't mean to focus on it. I guess I'm just saying that yeah, you know, yeah. th th there are these certain archetypes that play mm -hmm. out and I, it, it's just important to call attention to that. Right. So, and, and also child sexual abuse, right? So generally people talk about in terms of the Catholic church, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. But would it surprise you to know that there's evidence or research that shows that at the between the mid 60s and mid 80s, the peak of the Catholic Church scandals, that child sexual abuse in public education was nearly double that. Wow. Right. So you you won't hear about that. Hmm. And and there really is an agenda through the media to make religion look bad. So yeah. when people think this is an agenda, mm -hmm. um, it, it's actually true. <laughs> Hollywood hates religious people. Sure. And the more you can portray like religious people as hypocrites, the better it is for people who hate religion. So in public education and, and uh, Cheryl Shakespeare, she's the one who really did a lot of research on this, that one out of 10 people nearly K through 12 before being sexually assaulted before huh. graduating. One out of 10. By? By public educators. Wow. Right. So, so it's about power. No, they seek power because that allows them to carry out these pathologies. And I think that's another really um, big misunderstanding wow. that people get into power and slip into. A true predator seeks ways of getting power to carry out their pathologies. Wow. And and you'll see in public education that, and, and this is what I say, so so people want to talk about like, oh, when it's a sheikh doing it, we don't hold them accountable because mm -hmm. of whatever worldview we have. And it's like, no, hold on. There's public educators who win teacher of the year awards and when they're reported, other parents get upset that such a spectacular tr teacher is being reported, right? Coaches, USA swim team. This is in, in, San, in San Jose, right? There was the, the man or the, the head coach of San Jose Aquatics. Right. He'd been uh, sexually assaulting uh, swimming students for like a few decades. Or the Olympic team, the Olympic team. Yeah, Larry Nasser in, yeah. in gymnastics. gymnastics. But but even on the swimming team, there's been over a hundred coaches working for USA Swimming that are banned for sexual uh, misappropriation. Wow. Right? A hundred coaches. Are we going to like not be anti-sports now? Yeah. So, so like the reaction yeah. to be like anti-religion even or like can't trust religious figures, at least be consistent. Like, mm. do you feel that way towards sports? Because Pop Warner, golf teachers, ice skating, swimming, the sexual abuse is rampant in these areas. Mm. It's really rampant. Public education. And, and another thing in public education, it's um, about 11% of teachers said that they would tell on another colleague if they committed sexual abuse of children. So it's like cover-up culture. It's cover-up nature. It's not cover-up culture in religion. Mm. And it's really important we don't like imbibe Orientalist tropes about Islam, mm. that we're more likely to be abusive or to cover up abuse. Because we still, alhamdulillah, feel have a, an overall spirit of Amr bil Maruf wa Nahin al Munkar. Mm. And that's why. Enjoying people, good. Yeah, sorry, yeah, commenting to no, good, prohibiting yeah. the wrong. Yeah. And that's why people um, get really riled up when stuff happens. Mm. Mm. You know? Wow. Yeah. And that's why at least some leaders, again, they'll use activism and these concepts of commanding to good, prohibiting the wrong uh, for their own brand and as, as a way to cover their own abuses. But at least you have to pay the lip service. <laughs> you know? Which I think is a pretty good sign. Oh, okay. You like where where people object at least in theory. Yeah, exactly. At yeah. least in theory, because they know that's what people want to hear. So it's mm -hmm. good people like want mm -hmm. to hear that. So I, I want to get into uh, you know, because again, we're talking about this broad category, which we already identified at the outset that can be a little ambiguous. Um, and and you identified certain uh, like you 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 mentioned certainly sexual impropriety, mm -hmm. financial, um, you know. Uh, misanthropy or, or mm. you know, like abusing of funds, misuse of funds, et cetera. So maybe I think we should kind of maybe take one at a time. Okay. Right? So when we talk about, and, and let's just, you know, rather than bearing the lead, let's talk about sexual impropriety. Mm. Because even within that category, it's not all the same. Right. right? So you have pedophilia, mm. let's say on the one end, mm. and on the other end, you have what, at least on the surface, 
um, can or to the outsider can be viewed as consensual relationships mm -hmm. between uh, you know, fine teachers and students or murids and sheikhs okay. or whatever may be the case. Um, so, so, but at the same time that because there are, I mean, th those are all not one and the same. Right. Of course. Right. If, if we're looking at the spectrum ranging from pedophilia all the way to, um, you know, consensual, mm -hmm. uh, relationships, but yet all are equally or not equally, but again, all are quote unquote considered spiritually abuse, spiritual abuse. So how do we make that? How are we nu more nuanced about conversations? Yeah, I mean, I don't think that itself is a lack of nuance because it would be like everything that's bad fits under bad, the category of bad. Right? Okay, sure. So like that include like a misdemeanor to a felony, if right? You're talking about like bad stuff, but no. So but, it's only but, like a contradict or a but right there, that you, as you mentioned, misdemeanor and 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 yeah. felony or degrees of murder, even degrees right, of right, homicide, right. first degree, second degree, involuntary manslaughter, so on yeah. and so forth. You do have categories. I'm saying you the categories to, yeah. themselves lend themselves to nuance. Right. So, so the I'm very careful. Proof right. is different in involuntary manslaughter than it may be in first degree. So absolutely, yeah, yeah. Right, and that's what I mean. Okay. Is so when you're talking about so pedophilia, let's say on the one hand, mm -hmm. all the way to consensual relationships, uh, what I often find happening see, in yeah. the community, at least as a community, we're talking about all of these cases and lumping them together, and then having conversations around you know, spiritual abuse at large, right, rather than right. getting into the specifics of, well, you know, okay, when we're talking about a case involving pedophilia, okay, right. this is the this is the threshold or the standard right. that we should use. But when we're talking about consensual relationships on, again, on the other uh, end of the spectrum, uh, let's be, uh, you know, Absolutely, let, yeah. let's adopt a different lens of analysis. Right, right. Right? Right. Because in on the one hand, and again, the, and the other issue that sort of comes up time and time again is, is there underlying criminality, right? Mm -hmm. So in the case of uh, pedophilia, there is underlying, you know, uh, criminality there. Um, but in the case, or, 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 or sexual assault, uh, rape, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, sexual discrimination, things like that, right. where there's illegality in place. Whereas, again, going back to the other end of the spectrum, consensual relationships, there is no illegality there. Mm -hmm. However, it's still wrong. Right. So, you know, and so maybe getting into those kind of conversations or nuances. Okay, yeah. Like, why is that equally, like, why is that still worthy of being labeled spiritual abuse um, in the same category of a person? I mean, I've never it? myself right. put those two in the same category or yeah, even close to it. And if you go through, you could go through every single thing written because it's right. all on. No, the but it's side. happening. I'm not, I'm not saying you yeah. particularly or even in Sheikh's clothing. Yeah. I'm saying at, at large in terms of what's happening in, you know, the uh, cultural conversation. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I can't really answer for anybody else, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. That's a mistake. Just as you're identifying, I would agree with everything you've said. Right. Because I think one of the things and I want to really get into mm -hmm. this is, is is how you advise organizations yeah. who want to maybe set up, you know, codes of conduct mm -hmm. or, you know, how to spot abuse right. and things like that. So, you know, I think that's that, that, that that's also equally important is how do we have conversations? Right. And uh, yeah, like you're saying, I mean, yeah. to treat every improper action as an enormity is a very big problem right mm. so we we can't do that there's there's definitely a scope and uh i've always i mean i guess people sometimes just are fed up maybe and yeah. that's why they can do it I, I can't really answer right for what other people do um and so and again i'm reminded like again in this context and we certainly see you know we, we've met like there's been public cases of this where mm. again that have um, engendered conversations mm -hmm. in the community, but around this idea of secret marriages, right, right. something else that came up. Um, and, and so maybe like, okay. because it was so much in the, in the conversation uh, and probably will be again mm -hmm. at some point, maybe let's talk about okay, secret okay. marriages. So or let me ask you, when you hear secret marriage, what do you think? What's a secret marriage to you? A secret marriage to me is a person who uh, uh, takes on a second spouse mm -hmm. And then keeps that relationship uh, away from public scrutiny and eye. Okay, so you and, find some, it, and, in, and in some cases that the that the first spouse doesn't even know about it. Okay, so you would say secret from the community and the first spouse. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I mean that's another problem it's that like I've, he's not, I've, he's, I've really he seen. Doesn't come across. Right. Well on, on, that's on another problem I've seen is when we talk even uh, secret marriage. It's yeah. no one really has talks about what it means to have a secret marriage and yeah. i think i think we really need to start with the thick uh minimums right 
The, the what? The, the, the fiqh minimum. The fiqh minimum. Okay. So the Hanafis and the Shafi teacher I consulted with, there's no concept really of uh, nikah husiri, like a secret marriage. Sure. Okay. And if that term is used, it's going to be in terms of the witnesses not being there. Okay. And then the Maliki school, uh, a secret marriage and and uh, is when the the man is telling the woman or the witnesses or the wali of the woman to keep the marriage a secret. Okay. But if the woman wants to keep it a secret from the rest of the community, that doesn't count as a secret nikah. So that's that's should be our foundation. So in it of it in and of itself, a secret marriage is not. Um, an abusive action. Mm. Okay. And also, so I believe that the wali should know, and most uh, scholars would agree with that. Um, that the, that the legal guardian, the legal of guardian the, of the woman, of the woman yeah, cannot be bypassed. The bride should know. Now, when these marriages are done in secret from the legal guardian of the woman or the first wife or <laughs> other members of this of society, it's easier to carry out abuse and for there not to be any, um, accountability, accountability right. because these marriages are not legally registered. So That's whenever right. I've written about secret marriages, and perhaps I've overlooked it in a few things I've written, I always try to add secret marriages where the the bridal dowry is not given and the nafaka, the upkeep money is not given. Mm. So there's promises made that are broken and there's no way of accountability because they're not legally enforceable. So this is why, um, and I talked to... Uh, my, my sheikh overseas as well. And he, he mentioned the same thing that although the marriage, it's not a condition that it be publicized yeah, or, or we don't have necessarily concept of, of, of secret marriage in that way from the community that it's in, uh, it's in the best interest of both parties to remove doubt and also to have a way of preserving rights because it also becomes an issue of inheritance, right? So if the first wife doesn't know, then the inheritance really becomes an issue as well. Like something she's expecting or, and and or even to properly give the divide the inheritance. Another thing we need to be careful about and really uh, factor in is STDs. So how ethical could you say it is that the first wife doesn't know, and she's at risk for STDs mm -hmm. if there's other partners involved. Right. And the third portion, and and uh, the third portion now away from uh, transgressing upon rights. Um, religious leaders, I really believe. It's critical that there be transparency in the fact that they're married. If they if they have second wives, mm -hmm. um, there's nothing uh, wrong with polygamy, but there is something wrong. And I'm not saying haram, but wrong when someone is a person of qudwa, of a like a moral exemplar, mm -hmm. and they're hiding relationships because people will look up to them if they see them with another woman. That you know, it, it brings a lot of doubt upon them, and they sign up for this. Uh, type of more public life in that way they right. don't need to announce it on facebook but at least to the immediate community it shouldn't be actively kept a secret mm. but see here, here then we're, we're kind of shifting then because we're shifting from a legal burden or a legal scrutiny which is fiqh, like you know mm. islamic legal um uh, scrutiny to a more of a kind of a moral best practices uh, uh, standard. Yes, yeah, so I tried to cover all of it. So, right, got it. Okay. And, and I wanted to add before I slip this, that if the, because if you take opinions, like the woman doesn't need a wali, although it's like really encouraged, especially, and there's, because it's also considered the right of the father that she marries someone of a status that matches her, right? So, but if you're, if the teachers act, or the person marrying this woman is guiding her away from a legal uh, guardian mm. or people who can best advise her that it's that action itself, although not the marriage, the nikah contract, but that act itself of keeping away mm -hmm. from people who can help her make a best decision. That's not a, that's not a good practice, but again, you and still send sort of like flags should go up. Right. 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 Flag, right, like right. Why is this person well, you're, telling so, me to advising me to not seek count, you know, right. seek counsel, but, but, of, but they often but pick the flags on, wouldn't go up if, this person has been groomed to think of right. this person as that's right. 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 Yeah. And and the other thing is, so a lot of a lot of the women who are selected for this are carefully. So, so sorry, I first spoke about just a very healthy way of doing it, and still believing it's wrong now. Now we can talk about abusive. Well, before we shift, then because yeah, okay. I think uh, another thing that I would love for you to comment on, mm -hmm. because it seems like you've certainly studied it from a you know legal mm -hmm. uh, Islamic law perspective, um, uh, with regards to the consent of mm -hmm. the first spouse mm -hmm. okay it, is that a valid component to taking on uh entering into a polygamous relationship you're talking about as a bare minimum requirement no uh -huh. it's not 
right? So yeah. that that itself, I'm saying that that notion that or the validity of the nikah, no. right? And right. so that and and it was kind of I was sort of leading the question because that to me, you know, it, it, in and of itself, certainly in a Western context or a modern context, lends itself or opens itself up to the possibilities of this kind of misuse of of you know of, or legal or finding legal justification. To, in, to engage in these type of marriages. Right. And that's how a lot of unethical behavior is justified. That it's not haram. And we don't have like a ruler. What is right. it? So even like whether there's a wali or not, intentionally taking away from a wali, we don't have, like they say, like, right, al-hakim yarfar al-khilaf, that that's the right. ruler takes away difference of opinions in terms of people act on whatever view they choose to act upon. Right. So, i.e. that there's no authority that is enforcing. That's going to enforce any of it. Right, it's exactly. enforcing any of this. Exactly. And, and, I, and back to your point about not making every um, crime seem like an enormity, right? Mm. That's what's sort of lost, where a marriage is not announced to everybody, mm -hmm. but the man himself was not encouraging her not to tell anybody, right? Okay. Or her dad knows, you know, and her family knows, but they don't want to announce it to the community. Now, we can't treat that as somebody who, and we'll get to the abusive one, yeah, right? Right, right, said to hold sure, off on that. For yeah. sure, for sure. Um, as if it's abusive itself. Because, I mean, the truth is, a lot of people as well, they give women in polygamous relationships all kinds of trouble. Hmm. You know, and this has happened in communities I know, that the, that the other women in the community get worried <laughs> that their husbands are going to be influenced by this idea and take on a second wife. And this really happens, you know? Yeah. So they want to just avoid the drama. But what I'm saying is that you signed up for this if you're a religious leader. Signed up for what? Scrutiny? Public, like, to not have secret relationships. Ah, uh, okay. Right. Why? Because and I'm not saying secret abusive. Right. Just secret right. secret yeah. relationships. And you're saying that because we should, that you should be held, i.e. you as in a yeah. spiritual leader, should be held to a higher standard. Right. And people are looking up to you. You don't want confusion like, oh, saw him with this lady, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm not saying, again, announce it, but just don't actively keep it a secret. Right. Mm -hmm. But again, so, so, but, and, and you appreciate what I'm, what I was getting at earlier Absolutely. when I said that there, when we mentioned that very fact about the mm -hmm. higher standard, that itself is where, where we're taking, we're moving beyond just the legal exactly. threshold. We're getting into a more of a kind of a moral best, best exactly. practices. And that's why I said, analysis. let's start with the foundation, which is the fixed bare minimums. Mm -hmm. That has to be where we start. Right, right. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, appreciating that sometimes those fixed uh, minimums are, are perhaps um, antiquated in the sense that they don't address the complexities of you know, engaging these, in these type of marriages or relationships in a modern context. Well, it's not that they're antiquated for that reason. I mean, that's how it's always been understood, that these are bare minimums. It's not like yeah, what exactly. you, how you work in. So th that's why I'm saying that like that's right. bare minimums are different. It's like if you study Nikah in a fic book it's, uh -huh. it's, and think that's marriage, because this will be like a spiel when people want to do their marriage seminars, right? Like, oh, uh -huh. well, not just taking it from the fic books. It's like, look, man, no one took this stuff from the fic books of what a healthy marriage is. No one ever did that. Exactly. It would be the equivalent of taking, studying divorce law in, a, in, in, a, in like a, a law school right. and saying this is what a marriage is based on. Hmm. Most fake books, marriage sections, it's about the bare minimums for where, you know, the person's accountable to the Qadi, hmm. <laughs> what a valid divorce is, different kinds of divorce. Uh, does the woman have to breastfeed her child? Does she get paid for it? This is not, no one derives the ideal marriage or like the ideal marriage from bare minimums. Exactly. So it's not antiquated. No one ever did that. Right, right. <laughs> I guess what I was, and it maybe antiquated was the wrong term. What I meant was, and, and this goes back to something we, we mentioned earlier about how, what is the recourse available right. to people when marriages go wrong or when there is abuse? Uh, and well, actually, let's save that because like you said, we're going to be talking about yeah. secret marriages that are abusive later right. or where there's abuse that occurs. But even in the case of, Marriage dissolution, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's no legal recourse for right. the sub, for the polygam, the second or the third mm -hmm. or the multiple, you know, uh, because th th that marriage is not registered by the state, and hence right. her her legal recourse is very limited. And that's what's a very disadvantageous position, exactly, because right. the legal recourse is very tough. That's why, even um, to sign up for that, my advice would be if someone's going to do that. Not that I'm advising, but if someone's going to do that. They should even stipulate that they have, um, the, the woman has the, the right to give a divorce, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, that'll help out a lot in terms of if the relationship is to be ended to do that smoothly, uh, take the bridal dowry up front <laughs> as high as possible because 
there's not going to be an enforcement mechanism to get it later on. Exactly. You can't go to the court. So like stipulate as much of that in the contract as possible. As possible. Yeah. But even then, right. I mean, again, I'm just thinking like a lawyer here a little bit, which is, you know, that contract itself, it, how enforceable is well, it? I'm saying take it up front. Like just give me 20 ah. K right now. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? And don't, right. don't anticipate getting anything yeah. after that. Right. That's, that's okay. what I meant. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Um, so yeah, because uh, sorry, why don't we, please. why don't we take a brief break? Because there's a lot of heavy stuff to process. Let's slip in a word from our sponsor and then we'll come back and continue this conversation. Zucky, have you gotten all your tax receipts from 2018 yet? It's time to do our taxes. I haven't. I'm still waiting on a few and I haven't had the chance to chase them up. And I think part of the problem is that I can't really remember all the organizations or massage that I donated to. So it's hard to keep track. You know, that is so true, and I know just the solution. Did you know that if you partner with the American Muslim Fund, they can distribute your charitable giving to all the organizations you want to support, and at the end of the year, they'll give you one consolidated receipt. Hmm. So there's no need to chase up receipts from various organizations you've given through throughout the year and you can't even remember donating to. So the American Muslim Fund will manage and keep track of your donations for you in, order, in your own donor-advised fund. So that seems hassle-free and, uh, I don't know, not a, not a bad way to, to simplify your donations. Exactly. So to find out more about the American Muslim Fund and how donor-advised funds work, visit www.amuslimfund.org slash D-A-F-S or donor-advised funds. Nice. And we're back. Uh, thank you, uh, Zaki. Yeah, I, th- I think you're right. We need we we needed that breather um, from the good folks at uh, <laughs> the American Muslim Fund. So thank you for that. Um, but um, yeah, so I guess then maybe kind of moving along in the conversation um, to, like you said, uh, secret marriages that are abusive. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And what what would you say qualifies as making them abusive? Okay, so yeah, so secret marriages, we just talked about that are not abusive Mm -hmm. and ethical standards. Now, secret marriages that are abusive. Sure. Mm -hmm. And secret marriages that are abusive can meet every fake requirement, (laughs) right? Yeah. Uh, For the contract and still be abusive. Now, one, let's talk about practically how this plays out in in context of abusive ways. So, this is from people who truly are predators, groom or select from, uh, a group of women, which one will be someone they could just have a short little marriage with then dispose of. Okay. Okay. In many cases, the first wife helps in many, many cases. And the same helps f- how like actually select helps? a wife. Yeah. Select a wife. Cause she knows her husband's going to do it and will help select a wife that she can, that won't be a threat to her power essentially. Mm. You know, and this happens a lot. So, and, and this is not always the case, obviously, because, wow. and, and again, these aren't even polygamous all the time. Sometimes it's just secret monogamous marriages that are abusive. So it's not even just a polygamous aspect, right? So, oh, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we could just even call it secret abusive marriages, whether polygamous or monogamous. Got um, it. So, um, yeah, because you're drawing on real, like, I mean, real cases right. that you've helped with. Right. So, I mean, the kind of level of insight that you have is beyond theory. I mean, you're, right. you know, right. these examples that you're, that you're giving are not just theoretical. Right. They are real concrete examples of right. cases that you've dealt right. with. Right, right. Yeah. And then maybe if we can just make a mental note to talk about predators versus people who fall into sin. Because right now I'm, I'm going to talk about predators a little bit sure. about the secret marriages. So they'll weed women. And they're very good. And again, let's define that then. Okay, so predators, it's like, predator. it's like an animal predator. I mean, they'll lay traps, they'll feel people out and know who's good prey. Um, to give an example on child sexual abuse, I mean, there's a really good book I read. This is back like... Because when, I, when I hear predator, I think catching a predator, you know, Bill... Exactly, uh, no, that's, that's a great... Hanson, what was yeah, it? Yeah, uh, Chris, Chris, Jim, Hanson. Chris Hanson. You know, by the way, who's in a lot of financial trouble right now? He committed fraud financially. Mm. So that's another thing to know, just because someone's doing good work in one area does not mean, you know, they're wow. not crooks in another... You want to talk about mental notes, and I want to talk about this perhaps at the very (laughs) end after we kind of digest all of this is, you know, what happens to a person's good work, good works, uh, or how should we perceive a person's uh, talent or good works? Like, for example, this conversation, again, I hate to, I mean, I keep coming back to the the, uh, Leaving uh, Neverland documentary, but... You know, you've got people who are burning Michael Jackson records and swearing up and down that they'll they'll never (laughs) listen to Michael Jackson again, or... 
you know, Harvey Weinstein, whatever may be the case, Kevin Spacey, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, where people are like, well, you know, I refuse to watch anything with this person or listen to anything with this person or benefit from in this context mm-hmm. of what we're talking about, benefit from the knowledge or whatever good that may, they may have, uh, uh, that they may have uh, accrued or brought to the community uh, through their years of service. But let's come back to that. Sorry, I just want to okay. again make a <laughs> mental pen or a, okay. a pen in the show. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, they'll feel like even ask certain questions like, oh, so you're taking classes. Now. And th- again, they'll have already from just sight an idea of how vulnerable somebody is. And we're talking about predators. Predators, again, predators yeah. specifically mm-hmm. predators. So if you're like, oh, so how does your dad feel about you taking classes? Oh, you know, well, my dad, he's not really around. Oh, that, that's horrible. So what, what about your brother, though? Mm-hmm. Oh, so you're just here. Your family's not really active in your life. You know, and I'm kind of dram- dramatizing it. But then they'll weed out, okay, this sister doesn't have a lot of family members around. Mm-hmm. Or a new convert, or also from a broken family, let's say, right? Not somebody who like has a healthy sense of boundaries, but doesn't really have a lot of family around. Mm. And um, then they start offering private durus. In the cases where the first wife is helping, bring them over and hang out the three of them. So they get used to this idea of like what a polygamous marriage would even be like. And in other cases, um, I know of one teacher who actually uses his mom and first wife to bring in uh, to, for, for a lot of uh, like lessons in the home. And then the marriages happen and these are not long-term marriages in terms of even that's not even the plan then they're very easy to marginalize because a lot of the the opening up these sisters give like like when they open up about even issues they'll sometimes even have it on email and say tell other teachers when when that same sister complains if she complains that you know this sister she has a lot of mental issues she's crazy there's nothing i could really do about it many many cases i have where the sisters even wrote out that i feel suicidal you know and that's used against them then mm-hmm. of like, you know, what can I do with this? Of like, <laughs> like, and then so I even say like, look, either we got a lot of predatory teachers or we have like, you know, our poor, great respected teachers just marrying crazy women, just falling in love with them, you know? Right. And, and, and I mean, that's just, that's just the truth. I don't, I don't like using the word crazy in that way, but I'm just saying it how it's talked about. This no, is like I mean, how it's talked about. It's yeah. like what, uh, play the percentages, like what's exactly. more likely. Yeah. Right. So that that's one example again, Another, let me ask you hmm. if you could then pause and 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 comment on it from a from from the, from a validity or from a legal perspective okay hmm. islamic law perspective hmm. uh where the intent is for a temporary marriage so the person hmm. so the predator in this case he intends that this marriage will only hmm. be temporary um and, and i People are going to think muta when I'm saying this. So, muta, no. Right. I know. I'm just, so I'm just saying like, uh, l- maybe let's dispel, like dispense with that as well. Like what is, yeah. you know, muta even within the Shi'i tradition mm. and what does the Sunni tradition have to say right. to that? So, where the intent is temporary. Okay. Uh, let me just uh, quickly add though, sure. that the issue here is not that it's n- not that it's secret. The secret factor allowed the abuse to, to be carried out for sure. And a secret meaning if the, Sorry, and but an issue is like if her wali doesn't know. That's a real issue. Although there's khilaf, we can still recognize that as a very major issue. Hmm. And him guiding her away from consulting other people is itself abusive as well, right? Correct. Then the more concrete stuff is not paying the finances um, or just uh, the the harm it's going to cause her. Now, and this is what the people doing this know. And a lot of the teachers who are engaging in these type of nikahs where they intend to divorce her know this as well. But if the the people that so they'll condemn Muta because that's not part of the Sunni tradition, mm-hmm. right? But um, if you intend to not have a long marriage or to even have like a very short marriage, then that's allowed, although a horrible thing to do, that's allowed um, in the Sunni school. You're just not expressing that intention, mm. right? And uh, that that's pretty much what it is. And they know that. And that's exactly what's abused. And the fact that the nikah itself is valid does not mean this is a good ethical action. And the haram I'm pointing to is not even, or the, the harm I'm pointing to is not even the fact that it was temporary, but it's all the other stuff that happens. Then the maligning, destroying the sister's life, right, in the yeah, community, maligning right. character, and just going around doing the exact same thing. The problem is a lot of the people doing this have shiuch overseas who have done the same thing and continue to do the same thing. So you talk about it's like, like learned behavior or something. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, right. Absolutely. So they're not going to say anything wrong with it. What ends up happening, especially in the Sufi context, right, is that you have this idea of like awam and awam and uh, khas. 
So awam is like the average layman, and khas is the special people. Yeah. So, so there's select. Yeah, and this is this is a big thing in in everywhere. Like whether you talk about fake learning, like the ways to talk to awam, like the average person, the way to give answers, and not getting too deep into it, versus people who are actually students, right? And uh, so the saying is like awam kal anam, that the average person is like the sheep, and you, you just got to yeah. get shepherd and leave lead them along. Right. So what they'll do is to the awam, quote unquote, the average person, they'll say you know muta's wrong, secret marriages are wrong. Right. But they'll have their loopholes and operate at a completely different level. And this is what's happening, which is why I'm saying I have not gotten any pushback from people involved in Dawa about this going on. They all know it. The only complaint is you're making Sufis look bad. Mm. Right. And again, it's not just the Sufis. I've, I've been very clear about that. But that, that's like literally the only complaint because nobody denies this is happening. You know, I so, mean, there's Olia celebrated in some of these tarikas as like, oh, he entered 300 women. And and they'll even have sayings that like, that like, you know, don't follow me in three things. And one of them is marry, uh, marrying uh, a lot of women. And they'll say like, uh, like the state, spiritual state I feel while I'm inside of a woman. And that's how they say it is like my spiritual state in Salat. And people will just believe that, you know what I mean? And some, there's, there's stories of Olia or, or like statements in, a, you know, Olian quotes, um, not saying there are or there aren't, but like <laughs> they'll say things yeah. like, you know, I saw in a vision that any woman who uh, married me was free from the fire. So then he just went around doing this with a lot of women. And, and you got a factor in culture as well. Like a lot of them know what the deal is. So it's not even in that culture. But I mean, to take this as a spiritual person, a spiritual yeah. person is not supposed to be someone who's like showing his appetites in that way. So like even when you eat, you're supposed to say Bismillah out loud to remind others. But one of the reasons that scholars mentioned for not saying Alhamdulillah out loud when you're done is because it's showing like your animal nature of like, mm. you're so happy with like the taste of the food. <laughs> that, that you've satisfied an appetite. Yeah, you've satisfied an appetite. And this um, is, this is sexual appetite. And I, I, I can't help but think that, that there's gotta be, I mean, you know, I, I, I imagine I'm not alone and I imagine mm, that yeah. you have listeners who are listening and saying, well, you know, like you, you, you said it's highly problematized and it's problematic. If a person intends to keep it short term mm -hmm. or temporary, the guy wants to do that. It's reprehensible, but yet it's permissible. So, you know, and then now I think, especially in the present context of like the Me Too movement, and, and certainly we see traces of that and infusion of that in, into the Muslim discourse as well, like this whole sort of, you know, hashtag down with patriarchy, right? So people are looking at this and saying, well, God, you know, I mean, the, 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 there you go again. There's something deeply, you know, patriarchal or, 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 or you know, favors the male, uh, within the religious tradition. So, you know, how would you respond to that sort of an, of an accusation? Idea? I mean, these ideas of temporary marriages where it's not expressed, that is something the woman could, a lot of times, like I said, in societies, they know what the deal is. That's actually what I meant. Mm -hmm. Like both of them know that. And that's why I went from the angle of like, it's just uh, expressing desire, manifesting like your lust, mm. you know, mm -hmm. opposed. Uh, um, and yeah, if you want to talk about it from the the angle of the man owning the right to divorce, unless specifically stipulated from the woman, right? There's that from that angle of There's advantaging that. the man. I mean, that's that re, you know, I mean, that's that's tradition. That's our yeah. yeah, yeah. The man is the head of the household. That's right. That's right. Mm. Yeah. And I like just, I said, you said me too. I mean, I'm not on some me too hype with this. Like, no, I, no, I've no, never I used that hashtag. Is, but I'm saying is no, that, no. But there are people use. I'm just saying right. I've never used that hashtag. Um, I'm not again. You know, yeah, right. So, but I, I the think man is the head of the household, and that just means that that's added responsibility as well. Right. I guess right. I'm it's just not a way to of add control. A new wrinkle for you to consider, right. um, because you are going to be talking about this right. in, in, in in a context. No, this, this stuff's come where up. This kind of discourse yeah. is out there, right? And where it, down with patriarchy, everything's right. wrong. You know, you got to start with the ground up because right. it was at a time where men were, you know, sort of the you know dominant, uh, you know. Uh, there were the there were the bulk of the scholars and the bulk of the, yeah. bulk of the jurists and so on. Um, I'm not right. I'm not I'm not giving credence to that. I'm just saying that it exists. Out there. But even if that exists, right? Yeah. So that that's still a separate discussion sure. from abuse itself. Exactly. That's more of the narrative around abuse. Because right. I deal with a lot of people who have these ideas, right? And it, it's never been an obstacle in terms of helping anybody or working towards a common goal. Right. So although I don't agree with that narrative at all, because I subscribe to like the madhahib, right? Um, in, in traditional Islam, so I don't. I don't take on a narrative, but even if you take on a narrative, that's different than the abuse that's being discussed. Right. You know what I mean? Exactly. So, yeah, that, I mean, that's really what I would say. And, uh, sorry. So we, we were kind of continuing, mm -hmm. uh, along the lines of like the, um, kind of moving from the predator to just mm -hmm. abuse, right. Or right. to the abuser. Right. So, 
maybe we've, we've talked a little bit about the predator and how, like what kind of informs and the kind of methods and practices that these predators mm -hmm. use to engage in these secret marriages. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So let me just yeah. add though, that yeah. the man, this is what I was trying to say, mm -hmm. that the man being the head of the household does not mean he's better. So it's just like you have a head of state or even a police officer who's right. uh, given certain responsibilities or the Imam leading prayer. The Imam leading prayer is not better than anybody praying behind the Imam. It's just a position and you, and it comes with more responsibility. It does not make one better than the other. Um, Likewise, I mean, there's a hadith, I, I believe it's related to the end of times, though, that the best people will be those who enter gatherings. No one notices them when they're there and no one misses them when they're gone. It's not the person on stage. It's not the person teaching. It's not the person speaking, right? right. So a position of authority does not make you better sure, than those you sure, have authority sure, over. Sure, sure, sure. Um, so, so then again, like maybe then moving into the, into areas of actual abuse yeah. within these type of right. relationships. And then we should maybe move on to others, mm. just, okay. to something else. Yeah. So like w what qualifies as abuse within that context then? Yeah. So the abuse in yeah. that context, again, it's a maligning character. She was just crazy, mm -hmm. <laughs> starting really a campaign against this person because you're afraid your behavior is going to get caught. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, when we're talking about secrecy and hiding stuff, well, that's one of the reasons this stuff is done secretly because you know, it's not going to fly in, in with other like peer review, other public, teachers. Yeah. yeah. Public scrutiny, peer review. Yeah, and even forget the, the public. I'm talking like just yeah, other yeah. teachers. They're not going to accept that. So that's why a lot of people, they go to this, like it's called ta'wil, like you just call it mental gymnastics of interpretation <laughs> or such a minority view that some scholar said and act upon it. You could fool your crowd with that, but that's not going to work in a larger context. And that's how a lot of bullying is justified as well, right? Like breaking his nafs and just uh, he needed to learn or even like hitting children in Quran schools. This is a big problem overseas. Yeah. People will hit children like, okay, you're allowed to physically discipline, but you're not allowed to abuse them. And if this was done publicly, you, this would be condemned mm -hmm. because that allowance does not go that far. It's not abuse. You know, disciplining is not abuse um, to, to even censure somebody verbally when needed. It's not just uh, venting all your rage at them. It's not turning that person into an emotional punching bag. Mm. So these these are the things when done secretly, there's no checks and balances. Just and I'm talking just like a natural social checks and balances of inappropriate behavior. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um so um and then so in terms of cases that you've worked with mm. where these type of secret marriages yeah. occur yeah. and um and then the marriages fall apart or mm. the person intended for it to be mm. temporary anyway, and then the second spouse or the multi the, you know, whatever spouse is mm. then, you know, sort of dispensed with. Um, how do you counsel in those type of situations where the woman has some recourse to whether it's uh, uh, alimony, nafaka, like or or, or so, child support if there's child if there's children involved? Right. And so so the area I work in is yeah. literally if they have religious issues from it, and how could a person of religious standing mm -hmm. do this? And it's really about the religious aspect. Right. So I don't I don't deal with the law. Um, don't deal with therapy. But do you I'll advise people? people? You refer yeah, a people. lot, a lot. Yeah, yeah. even yeah. even sometimes legal of what yeah. they could do, but I'll say you, you'll need to look into that and consult with a lawyer. Right. Primarily, what I do is help is just work in the religious area of it. Mm. Right. And, and and I mean, a lot of people they've had religious ideas used against them for abuse, so it's kind of just talking through that, right? And, helping them. and they're processing it. Yeah. Exactly. So I, I very much focus on just that, mm. and and, and I should say that this is also Shia, Sunnis, no matter what worldview. And uh, so I said right now, so the, the Mutza, we don't have Mutza, but the Shias do. Right. So like, it's not really, all of that's what I'll say if I'm, we're talking about it, but I can, I work with people who have like all kinds of different beliefs because right. abuse is still abuse within those traditions, right? Mm. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So <clears throat> as we kind of wind things down, I was curious if you could uh, elaborate on uh, narcissism as mm. something that people deal yeah. with, because, because I think as a concept, that's something people have a hard time getting their arms around. It's, it's really difficult. Even if people understand it to really be able to implement it. That, that's one of the key things to protecting yourself. Just realizing there are people who have no moral breaks and will do anything to harm you, anything mm -hmm. at all. And they will use good causes to make a cover and to have access to people that they can abuse. Mm -hmm. And that is something if we don't understand, I mean, it's, you're never going to really be able to fight against it. So I mean, I've been asked a few times, like to create some certification program for leaders. And mm -hmm. it's like, if you're talking about narcissists, you're never going to, they'll be the first ones to get certified. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And it, and it, then people wow. think like, oh, this is a certified individual. He's going to know not to abuse, right? It's like, no, he did that or she did that and it's going to be a cover. And I say she because there's a lot of female narcissists. And, and can you, out can you define well. the term for people as yes. It's maybe. a narcissist, narcissist. If we talk about like just um, how it's commonly used, someone who's really into themselves. Mm -hmm. But if we're talking about the personality disorder, right? Um, the, the simple, the, and there's a whole section on the website just for that. But the whole, um, the quickest way to say it is somebody who has no moral breaks hmm. uh, and, and understands you very well, has insight into what empathy is, right? Wow. They know how to act like they have empathy. They'll cry if you, if they, if crying will be beneficial in an argument, if they can't shut you down, they will cry and make it look like they're really sorry. And you're going to walk away feeling guilty. A lot of times masters at, of uh, distracting conversations when you're trying to like talk about something in specific that this person did. Right. So um, and they, they're ruthless, ruthless people who can be ex incredibly charming, wow. incredibly charming because they're in tune to your emotions. So they know what you want to feel. They know what you want to hear. And uh, these people are very, very skilled in confrontation. So you have to be trained. And that's a lot of what I do as well, actually training people on how to have these encounters, you know. So and this includes men, women, uh, activists, obviously. And, and you'll see a lot of times that the way abuse is covered up is when people align pol in political causes because you have a lot of activists, uh, sorry, a lot of uh, narcissists, yeah. whether an activist or religious uh, in the religious sphere, and they're all in it for themselves, <laughs> you know? Wow. And uh, a lot of times, I mean, that's why people get to high positions. Not always, but sure. like a lot of times. Right. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that goes to, you know, Pervez, you and I have had conversations about sort of Muslim activists and sort of, uh, and we've had conversations on this show, you know, about right. there, there is a high degree of what sure feels like uh, uh, people who are trying to jockey for position in, in sort of... In every know, area, yeah, no, ab know. absolutely. And, and I'm telling you, look, a lot of these people who will take stances hmm. against certain teachers, if their improprieties come out, will cover up for their own because they're valuable to their own cause. Wow. So the, 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 the misactions of a teacher... The abuse of a teacher will be kind of a tool to take down someone you had a grudge with anyway. Mm. That happens a lot of times. Jeez. Yeah, you know that's right. We can't forget forget that part of it as well. The sort of right. political. Yeah, and then like, when they agree on causes, they will cover for one another. Mm. A big, and I mentioned this in a previous interview as well. You have a lot of women taking advantage, female scholars taking advantage, or teachers taking advantage of the void of that position, or even at more abuse cases coming out and saying, "Now we need to support female scholarship." i.e. give me a platform, you know, and that that's really happening. And mm. they're, they're known bullies for a long, for a long wow. period of time or covering up for other people mm. who are committing abuses and who can marginalize other women better than other women. <laughs> it's not seen as sexist or misogynistic anymore. Huh. So two things I want to like, again, as, as Aki was sort of as we wind down the conversation is one is how do you advise someone then, you know, from a spiritual point of view, mm. like, someone who is the victim of this kind of spiritual yeah. abuse or even uh, like someone who has suffered from sexual abuse uh, yeah. or um, uh, assault by a spiritual teacher, like, because they're dealing with real um, uh, a crisis of faith in mm -hmm. a lot of cases, uh, a real existential crisis mm -hmm. in terms of who they are, what decisions they've made in life and so on. So, you know, how, how do you, how do you help sort of counsel that? Yeah. So again, I don't give the therapy and that's right. very, I want yeah. to mention that, but um, in terms of just the religion that mm -hmm. this is not part of our deen, this stuff's highly condemned. And this is again, just like a generic <laughs> kind of conversation, but it's a lot more involved. Um, so, and just uh, admitting that this is a very wrong, what happened, uh, have religious discussions about it. Maybe if you give a concrete example, it'll be a little yeah, easier. Yeah, no, for me. I, I just, I, I think, I think that itself is helpful. And then like and the, way you, yeah. the way you triage it by if, if a person needs counseling or right. therapy, then you have people that they can go to if, right. for that. Or if they have legal right. issues that they need to resolve, right. they can, you know, I, I think one stuff that one thing that's really helpful, especially when people yeah. were groomed is that I can walk them through the manipulation and show what happened mm -hmm. and they won't even realize how early they were being groomed. Wow. So like really understanding manipulation, being able to articulate that, that's been very helpful for people. Right. And, and are you familiar with pickup artists? Because sure. a lot of these people are using tactics of pickup artists. Sure. So let's say, you know, they're talking to a sister and they'll say things like, um, you know, um, you look, oh, you look really beautiful. You have a lot of nur on your face, mashallah. And then just say it very casually, right? And it leaves the person thinking, what did they mean? But actually barriers are dropped slowly and slowly huh. in, in that type of way, right? And then they go in for something. And there's been multiple cases. I don't know what it is with cups, but like 
of picking up cups at the same time and hands touching at that point, you know, and like uh-huh. touching and then moving the finger a little bit down on the other hand. And this is, this is like happened a lot. <laughs> wow. Like that's where it starts or with cups specifically. Like I've had a few, yeah, I don't know, but that's actually, maybe it's like the perfect excuse yeah. to do, to do yeah. something. Other cases, you know, figuring out what the vulnerabilities of a person are right. and using that against them in, in terms of even marginalizing them, having just presenting emails. This is what happened after, you know, so sometimes it's just groping, um, sexual assault, actually. And then in other cases, it's it's through marriage, but it's not even always marriage. And and also um, there's uh, abuse to grown men as well, like sexual abuse, sometimes under the guise of rukia, you know, like, a, like a, how, how would you translate that? Um, like the occult or someone is uh, sort of demonic. Like blessing them, you could blessing say. Blessing them. Blessing them. Yeah, and then like right. just kind of like groping yeah. other men as well with a friend I have who was a convert. Under the guise uh, yeah. of performing this sort of uh, right. ceremony or ritual ceremony, right. cleansing, ritual cleansing of someone or what have you. Right, right, right. And then other men, you know, maybe just taking their chances, putting pornography on and then trying to make a move and realizing that the guy is not really into that, you know. So all this, all this stuff happens. <laughs> and, That's uh, right. So, so then my second thing that I wanted to sort of leave with is, uh, so how are you consulting organizations? Like, you know, are, is it proactive or are you... You know, is there some sort of like code of conduct that yeah, organizations of, can... Yeah, big time. So we, we've been doing that for a long time, code of conduct. And that really is a mechanism to have accountability and something solid to stand on. So a lot of this goes back to the difference of opinions and, well, this isn't haram and or just even co-valid views, really. So it's to give a concrete standard that everybody could really have. Mm-hmm. And it's not going to... That even requires people to um, be proactive and seek justice. So my main message is no one's going to do anything for you. You really have to be proactive. Don't let your guard down. Don't think other people are going to take care of it for you. They're really Mm -hmm. not. You have to make it a problem, you know, so you have to really push for accountability. And then, and then you have organizations and employees who have agreed upon something. So if the institution doesn't do its due diligence, they could be held accountable as an institution or you could sue, but that still requires having a fighter spirit, Mm. you know? So it's not like, I, I feel like as important as these codes are, it's sometimes people are looking for just a quick solution and there's not going to be because we're talking about humans and it's it's like a hacker. You put up more protection on your computer. It's more of a challenge to the true predators, you know, yeah, that's right. So there's there's nothing that replaces assertiveness. If someone like touches you or does anything inappropriate and says, well, it's not haram or makes justifications. say, OK, well, I'm not saying it's haram, but don't talk to me like that. Don't touch me like that. It doesn't matter if it's halal, you know, you got to have your own boundaries. And, and really my message is that you don't assume you, everyone starts off with a clean slate and someone in religious position, just don't uh, put them, treat them, don't have your guard down with them anymore. You would with any other stranger, any other profession. Um, Everyone has a clean slate. Uh, You can't assume this person did anything wrong, but it's like locking your car when you park your car in the street. Mm -hmm. You don't say that person's going to break in, but you just know that theft happens and someone could break in. Mm -hmm. And and even when you have friends, you have boundaries. So just because you're close with somebody, you don't give them your email password, right? You don't give them your credit card, even though you're friends. So don't give your emotional credit card to Mm -hmm. somebody just because they're in a religious position. It's boundaries. It'll protect you from having, from uh, being paranoid about things, from being worried or trying to figure out who's an abuser and who's not. You know, I, I like never worry about that because I have boundaries and I tell other people, if you can learn this, then you won't be worried at all either because you'll just have healthy boundaries. Mm -hmm. We cross paths with murderers. We cross, cross paths with thieves all day. Right. But it's really just about, doing the best you can to protect yourself. That's right. I mean, it's like, it's like our body is, is constantly encountering all kinds of right. bacterium and, and viruses, right. but you just build up your immune right. system where you can right. inoculate yourself from, from that. Stuff. Exactly. And then the other part is then there's other people who cannot do it themselves, more yeah. vulnerable people. Right. And it's our duty to stand up for them and help those people. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's really another part of the, the training. I mentioned that teaching people to band together. Public humiliation, for example, does not happen without public bystanders. Hmm. Now, do you see, just again, based on statistics that you've dealt with, like, uh, is, there a certain, is there a certain archetype of someone who, who, who is more, um, you know, um, uh, uh, what was the word? Uh, vulnerable. To vulnerable, yeah. thank you, to right. abuse. So, yeah, the vulnerability. about converts, right. and, and there's a whole social... It's not just because they're converts. No, no, of course, yeah. not. of course not. But, but what happens in hmm. a lot of cases with converts 
is they uh, uh, the, their families are not supportive mm-hmm. of the conversion, and so they're really isolated by way of friends and family right. with this new, you know, with the embracing of the new faith. And so that makes them vulnerable in so a sense would, of social vulnerability. Right. So I would talk about, yeah, people who are just isolated from their family, whether period. converts or not, period. That's right. Um, and then other descriptive definitions, like somebody who's just recognized as very naive, very gullible, they'll believe anything. And I mean, these people are like tested out a lot of times. Sure. Like you walk with them, take them in random directions, see if they're going to follow you. Like DAs, when they're trying to get like false um, confessions or false testimonies, they'll hear someone's story repeat it uh, with new added details and see if this per- person will tell the story a second time with those added details. So there's, there's people you could tell who are a lot more vulnerable than others. Others uh, just lacking self-esteem. And then it's not just a character about the character. Um, other times it's about circumstances. So for example, just getting over a um, like bankruptcy, for example, uh, over a, an addiction or even or a failed relationship or a failed relationship. Divorce, divorce right. Days, yeah. Or even looking for religious experience. There's a lot of people who have been very cynical about religion and then they'll find one teacher and had a religious experience with that teacher. They're very, very vulnerable with that teacher. And it's really that the teacher's duty to not exploit this, you know? Yeah, yeah, and when, when we see it in somebody, we need to do our best to prevent that abuse from happening, but also realizing that they won't be in a place where they want to hear anything you're saying. And how much has like social media and this, the, the, the kind of cult of personality mm-hmm. and sort of, you know, superstar imam, the superstar sheikh, mm-hmm. The, you know, that they sort of, right. you know, how much of that has the celebrity? Yeah, it's made know? it easier. It's made it easier. And I would say like, whenever people talk about celebrity culture, I'm like, let's not be celebrity consumers then. Cause there's mm-hmm. no celebrity culture without a, without an audience that wants that. Right. It's a market demand. So my advice is don't be in any Facebook groups. That's fans of some sheikh or sheikh does not, or a teacher does not have fans. Mm-hmm. Right. There's, we shouldn't do that. If you're making, if you're seeing statuses and this isn't at anybody, cause I don't know if anyone actually put in these words, but if you see a status, like, you know, <laughs> I want to be my wife when I grow up, you know, and that's, that's fishing for likes a lot of times, you know, or like, let's say you get a deal bundy and a burelvi eating a meal together saying that like, you know, unity starts with us or something. And I don't know if this has ever happened, but that kind of stuff, they're fishing for likes, not necessarily because it could be, it could go both ways. All this stuff could go both ways. It's very sincere, but don't reward stuff like that, you know, and, and really, <laughs> we shouldn't treat Islam as a commodity as mm-hmm. consumers either of making demands of what should be taught. Yeah. People should do this or do that. We need teachers talking about this. Be the change you want to see. No one's stop. I mean, most people, no one's stopping them from learning the deen. Right. So yeah. why, why do you want someone else to do it? We're not that kind of religion. We're a religion where all of us have a responsibility. Wow. Nice. Um, the, the, so there was a point where I was like, let's make a, mental note on the show or make a yeah uh, about the difference between falling into sin or predatory behavior i believe there was that that was the point oh, okay. that you wanted to put in okay. but what about what was my point and i can't remember it now but but, but please okay. flesh out what you were going to say i ask that of you all the time what's your point <laughs> <laughs> my wife the same yeah, yeah so falling into sin is zalal and predatory behavior is like calculating seeking people out to to hurt right or to have relationships with okay that's predatory behavior. zalal is for example Two people spend a lot of time falling in love and and like commit zina, right? Okay. That's not predatory, callous behavior. That's falling into sin. And I think uh, sometimes we even call people who've fallen into sin predators when that's not the case. So Very you talk about Thank classification. You. So that's something yeah. I always want uh, to bring people's attention as well. Right. I think that's a very important distinction, yeah. right? Because autom- again, you know, again, the lack of nuance along these conversations, mm-hmm. what ends up happening is true predators get lumped with people who are just like you said, I mean, they're right. just guilty of sin or temptation right. or falling into, you know, that, that kind of thing, which again is dealt with in a very different category than, mm-hmm. you know, actual predatory behavior right. where abuse occurs. Right. A, pred- a predator is a whole different thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We can't call people predators if they're not actually predators. Huh. Right. Yeah. I yes, remember the point you were talking about what happens to the good work that a person does. Thank you. That's okay. And I, think I think that's important. It is very important. And, and I don't mind doing that as we close out. So, because again, like I said, you know, whether it's the mic, whether it's an artist mm-hmm. or whether it's a spiritual leader or, you know, a, right. uh, yeah. So this happened a lot. This is conversations around, you know, the, the dad from seventh heaven. He, oh, he had sure. some child sexual abuse. Yeah. So I mean, I just on some YouTube comments, Oh, this is tainted. Uh, the Cosby series is tainted. And, and I, I wrote an article on, is the knowledge tainted, um, conveyed by abusers? 
And, and, you know, my answer to that really is that you're going to have a negative association, unfortunately. And that's why I took this so seriously, mm. because you had people projecting this onto profits, unfortunately. And that's the doubt of faith that it causes yeah. that because the atheist arguments that really resonate with people are religious or people used religion for personal gain, including profits. Right. So that actually makes sense to some when they see abuse and in other cases, it tears down the tradition of foundational scholars, you know, of how do we know they weren't corrupt? So I would really say that. You separate the action from the person. We praise action. Even our contribution to celebrity culture is praising the person rather than the work. Mm. We don't know anything about the person unless we truly know them. Mm. So like Murab al-Hajj, for example, recognized as a saint, that was by people who knew him over the course of his life in a village setting where there are no secrets, there are no walls. It's not somebody you know from a stage you don't know those people that are speaking at a stage and you could benefit tremendously. You take your benefit from them. Allah says in, in, in I'm sorry, the, it's a hadith that Allah will assist his deen even at the hands of a fajr. And a fajr is like a really foul person, like it, maybe not even Muslim. An example of that is Elijah Muhammad. How many people came to Sunni Islam via Elijah Muhammad first, right? Mm. Not even a Muslim. So that that really, the the good people do, the good that goes through people is separate from the people themselves. And we have to really keep that in mind. Do not conflate the two. Your religion did not teach you that these two come together. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why the more we study, we realize how radically we believe in only the prophets are perfect. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. that's something we have to hang on to. So this should not cause doubt in religion. Yeah. Another, another that's point, right. yeah. um, I, I say teachers a lot because something we have to really understand is even the ulama, if we say sheikh, like in the literary sense, we don't really have many in North America. Like very, 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 very rare to find someone like that in North America. Well, I mean, real, and I think, I mean, but that scholars yeah. in the if if you go with scholars in terms of finishing a program or like an academic equivalent, sure we have scholars, but not every teacher is a scholar, and even the scholars don't fit their literary sheikh, and that's important because people read books on other Buddhist sheikh, and that does not apply to people here. We have a lot of da'is here, a lot of teachers, and that's not anything. Uh, that's not any shade on them because they're doing the best they can and they're rewarded for doing good work. But this is just about categories. Like, you know, people... Well, these... Mm. And I think it's a problem with nomenclature because, yeah. I mean, these terms get thrown around because, I mean, I think there's even like sort of this right. sort of hierarchy that's fed into the narrative where it's like someone is a sheikh versus <laughs> an ustaz... An ustaz or a sidi. Versus a sidi <laughs> versus a teacher. Right, I mean, right. And so I... I yeah, we but the word sheikh is problems. important because there's a lot, there's a literary history behind there what is. sheikh is. Yeah. There is certainly. Um, um, well, this is, I mean, we're we're bumping up against the clock here, but this is a obviously a much broader conversation, and I do hope people uh, will go to the website uh, and check it out. I mean, I, you know, I had told Pervez earlier. I mean, I've I've been there often because I find the information there very uh, eye opening. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and so if you can give uh, people the website once again. Okay, so yeah. insheikhsclothing.com, I-N-S-H-A-Y-K-H-S, clothing.com. Yeah. And and do you... do you I personally... talk to everybody that reaches out, yeah. Okay, so, so, I mean, I, have, can... I talk to people all around the world. Okay, so people can contact you through the yeah, website. Yeah, whether Sunni, Shia, Salafi, Sufi, any group. I mean, I've, I've even worked with Christians um, and done work in sports abuse as well. Okay. Well, uh, Danish Hassan, thank you so much uh, for spending the morning with us here. Uh, I do hope people will. I'm, I'm very certain that people listening will, uh, you know, find what you have to say meaningful. And, and I hope they will seek you out. Uh, Pervez, you want to take us out? Yeah. And, and again, I, I think something that we mentioned at the outset, I mean, you know, thank the good folks at, Hub, um, at the Hub Foundation. You know, Diffuse Congruence is very proud to be sponsored by the Hub Foundation. For those that don't know or don't live in the Bay Area, the Hub Foundation hosts live talks by Karen Armstrong, Noam Chomsky, Hamza Youssef and other luminaries at Hub 925 in Pleasanton, uh, California. Um, and, and one last sort of upcoming event that's coming up that I did want to advertise was uh, April 26th. They are hosting Dr. Hina Choudhury and Hakeem Ilyas Kashani speaking on the uh, topic of the sacred heart, findings from modern and traditional medicine. And for more information and tickets, please do visit hub-foundation.org. As we, as we wrap things up, I want to, first of all, I want to thank Omar in the booth for running audio for us uh, and making us sound pretty. Please, if you are listening and you have thoughts and comments on anything that we have talked about in this episode or previous one, please email us at diffusecongruence at gmail.com. You can also hit like on our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash diffusecongruence. You can also uh, find Pervez on Twitter and his handle is Pervez Zephan. 
and my handle is uh, Zaki's Corner. That's the A K I S Corner. That's also my uh, website, just added dot com. And thank you once again for listening. Thank you to our guest uh, Danish Klaus for joining us. And on behalf of my partner Ben Zahmet, uh, my name is Zaki S, and this has been Diffusing Grids. Catch you next time.